morning everybody it is cold again it is only five degrees outside which is why i'm all rugged up again um but that probably won't last long once i get into work as i said in my previous video i'm gonna crack straight into getting the last door on the holden commodore done sound cleaned up sound dinned in the speaker in and once i've done that i'm gonna be starting on installing a new stereo into the dash specifically the Alpine X008AU with the Alpine made to fit uh, Holden, Com Holden VE Commodore fitting kit. So that's the plan for the day. Um, I'll quickly bang out this door and then start going into a bit more detail with the stereo. And yeah, hope you enjoy the video. I'm the Right, I have finished all the speakers and sound deadening in the Holden VE. Scratch that, I haven't finished the sound deadening, I still have to do the uh, parcel tray for sound deadening. But the speakers are done. I've done all of them. Done, 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 done. The tweeters, don't know what it's going to sound like yet, we haven't got a head unit in there yet. But next step, obviously, get onto the head unit. So in the time it's taken me you know, to finish off that door and quickly install head unit to another car. Look what's happened to the bloody weather. Like, it was like overcast and miserable this morning and now it's like, well, it's, I mean it's 12 degrees so it's not hugely hot but it's, it's bloody sunny. This is the thing about Christchurch. Have you ever come into New Zealand? Oh, shit yeah I am man, you know it. Meteorologist, anyone can do it. The multimeter, yeah it's over here. This is the thing that a lot of people will tell you if you're ever traveling to New Zealand, pack everything. Bring your snow jacket and bring your speedos because the weather can change in a heartbeat. Right, time to look at a head unit. I think I'll probably tidy this up a wee bit first. I'm gonna put the factory speakers back in their boxes and get that all tidied away. And then clear out all this mess and lay out the head unit and everything I need on this table so I know what I'm doing. And yeah, pretty excited to see what this is gonna look like. So. Stay tuned. Okay, let's unpack some of this stuff. So it looks like we got ourselves like the manual, warranty things and everything like that. Piece of foam, not quite sure what that's for. That is our USB extension cable, our main wiring harness, secondary wiring harness with the reversing camera input and things like that on it. Oh, and make that, and third wiring harness. So this has all the RCA outputs and inputs and things like that on it and this one here. Okay, that's the GPS serial. Yeah. And here's the head unit. Oh wow. It's like a regular doubled in head unit from the back, but at the front, a big display. See, oversized. It's what the screen is wider than the chassis and taller, but a regular doubled in chassis. What's that? Oh, it's got optical audio output, holy cow. HDMI input. OEM sub display. That, now that's something I'll talk about in a minute. Yeah, stay. Here's the fitting kit. So we've got a manual for installing the fitting kit. Wiring harness and an aerial adapter. Well packaged. Boom. Here is the fitting kit. Okay. Oh my god. 
to give you an idea, look how thin that is right there. That's my index finger. It's that's at the thinnest point, probably two millimeters wide, maybe three. That is insane. Do not want to break this. And it's very nicely finished as well. It feels like soft touch finish. Okay, so there's the lovely fitting kit. And then we got the mounting bracket fascia. Quite well packaged, I must say. What do you reckon? Pretty fancy sub output display. It's definitely made for OEM cars. Yeah. About Tom New Zealand had something like that. Optical output. Mm. Okay, here's the main wiring harness from the fat fitting kit. Oh man, it comes pre wired for the head unit, so I don't even need to do any wiring at all. Bloody good. So that will, so that means I don't even need this. That will plug straight into there. Bloody good. That will be the steering wheel control input. This is the sub output display connector. I'll explain that in a minute. Then we got uh, a CS3 there. I know where that goes. That plugs into a um, accessory output in the car. A remote output for the aerial adapter and a remote output for an amplifier and then this thing which I'm a little bit more confused about not sure what it does but I do think it has a place so I'm unwrap these ah yes I have already installed the microphone in the car I should say the microphone is already up there the reason I had done that already is because I wanted to um, get these panels back on and the microphone has to run down and behind here so I've already done that portion of it GPS antenna comes with a magnetic adhesive section and a few stickies. Oh no, that's a, um, those are sticky cable, uh, what do you call it, keepers, or cable managers. Let's have a look at this instruction manual. Jesus. Now, this wire, what is this? Sub, I know, the VSS green white goes to the secondary connector, which is this one, that way. This one goes. And there, okay. Okay. So this, that's the steering remote input, so we know that this goes to there. We know that this goes in there. Okay. Speed sensor. Oh, VSS. Okay, yeah, variable speed sensor. So that's what that connects to. So I have to, looks like I have to solder one wire. Oh no. Just have to solder this to this. And it's already the right color. So that's gonna make it nice and easy. So I'll cut this one there. And this one there. This is the remote output for the aerial adapter. I'm going to leave these their maximum length because I know that the aerial and the quad lock are actually on opposite sides of the car to each other so I want to be have, have plenty of length for them to connect up. Okay, solder. Fine. I think I'll probably tidy all this up with a bit of um, fabric tape just so that it looks less bundly and a wee bit more loomed. Now what are these long ass ones here? Remote out, remote in. I think these are for like a... Um, or like a drop down monitor or something like that but we don't need them so I think I'll cut them short normally I would leave these long but there's not much room in there for extra wiring so I'm going to cut these nice and short so they're out of the way and I'm going to cut them in such a way that they would follow all the way along there do 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 they're going to hide in there Okay, I think that's everything entirely loomed up. So we got the main output from the head unit, the sub display output, the secondary loom output with the camera and the remote steering wheel control input. Um, that one there, that is an external hazard light switch which I will mount somewhere on a, um, on a hidden away dash panel. Main harness, accessory input, and then this one here plugs into the back of this heater display here. So I'm gonna put this in the car and try and sort of tuck it away a wee bit just so it's, yeah. Let's see if I can get this in. Let it go. Right, so here's the quad lock plug. 
this should just like get in like that and done connected and then this one here is the accessory that plugs into there okay now I know I'm gonna be putting the hazel lights over on that side so they can pop out of there what's that now this is the aerial I wonder if I could go down and out the bottom with this that would be ideal okay and then this plugs into there yep so it reaches all the way into the bottom that's good so now the rest of all this stuff does plug into the stereo Now the USB and the microphone are going to come out of that side and also the GPS as well I think. So I can do that, I can run that down behind there and then in through there I think probably. Okay, so as you can, guys can see, I've got most of the wiring done. GPS antenna is mounted. Pretty much everything is there, although I haven't put the USB cable through anywhere, which is this. Need to figure out what I'm going to do with that. But before I can put anything in, or the stereo in, or anything like that, I need to put in some RCAs and a remote wire, and at least get them out of the hole so that I can then look at mounting the stereo in there. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to loom these up, get it through the hole, connect it to the subwoofer output which is on here and then the and then the USB can just dangle out and I'll mount it somewhere else later and then I want to try and get the head unit in and get it going and see what we can do Okay, I am about to try and get the stereo in the car. I'll need this. Okay, now, long things first. GPS and a microphone I have not attached to the factory loom just because the factory loom is already so big it does not need anything more bundled to it. So now that I've got those plugged in, I can pull the excess back through which there is a fair bit oh, and also the USB can be connected hopefully it'll go over top of there and plug into there okay this thing has to go underneath RCA's plugs into there okay getting there this big fucking thing goes upside down conveniently and there is that all the way back yes okay sit that on there now the main loom plugs in there and then also this thing which has become there we go plugs into this weird ass hole over here which I'm not going to be able to tell if it's up the right way or not. Aerial, oh crap, plugs in there. This, after all that, has to reach through one of these holes, I would imagine. Now I have to start trying to pull things through the hole as I do it. Okay! We have had some success. I've had to skip forward a wee bit progress wise just because my, my camera battery died so I just put it on the charge to you know, give it a couple more bars before I show you guys anything else. And also you probably didn't really need to see the last like half hour of me mucking around trying to fit this bloody thing in the dash. It wasn't, it's not like the size of the stereo or anything like that, it's the bloody wires coming out the back of it. There's so many of them and getting them to all, you know, 
nicely tucked duck out of secret little holes has just been an absolute mission and then like I powered it up and for some reason the um, screen above the stereo wasn't going so I took it all out checked it all put it back in tested it and then it went again so I don't know if I bumped something or if it just needed a reboot but it's all good now because we're working and yeah it's actually ready to be booted up so I've put most of the stuff back together but I've just got a couple more things to do and I can show you so that's all mounted in this is the really nice fitting kit which is just going to plug in there before we put this on though we have to get the clips for these off the factory head unit so we'll go get those there we go so there's the factory head unit factory faceplate now I believe it is these clips we use I'll just double check and make sure please retain factory mounting clips to mount fascia to mounting plate replacement mounting clips can be bought from Holden so that will be these things so I'll just take them off one two Now this should just clip onto here. Yep. Just like that. Okay. Plug it in. This way. In this and it looks like a lot of fun. Okay, let's turn it on and make sure it goes first. Okay, right on to ignition. Hold in. So up here we've got voltage and oil temperature now, or pressure or something, I'm not sure. Um, it also displays your yeah, stereo uh, frequency and volume and things on the in dash display there. Look at that, that's bloody cool. Hazard lights. Don't know if you guys can see at the top there, it says 105.7. It's a rocket work. Okay, let's try to pop this on. Oop. Okay, so guys, it looks like I'm gonna to have to take the head unit out again and possibly make it sit a bit lower in the brackets that are holding it in because it's just too high up, which is really annoying for me, but no problem for you guys because by the time you by the time the next clip plays after this one, I'm sure I'll have it maybe succeeding. Don't know. Two hours later. Okay, I got it, got it, got it, got it. Wasn't easy. I um, I had to make the holes that the brackets, you know, attached to the car on a wee bit wider so that gravity could allow it to sit a bit lower, and then we could get the fitting kit in under this bezel. This was the problem that I was having was hitting this, but now it sits low enough that it can fit, and it's in there. Um, one thing I'm going to have to do is use some hot glue or something because the clips that are on the back of this aren't quite you know fully holding it in there strong enough so I'm going to use in conjunction with those clips a bit of hot glue on them just so that once it goes through it dries and then the hot glue prevents it from popping back out but other than that I've got it back together it's going that screen's working that screen's working the steering controls are working I'm pretty much in pack down mode and clean up and then after that I can start, start running wires for the amplifier and get onto that um, the center speaker I have put back in, but I've left it disconnected. The reason for that is because it's gonna sound a lot worse than all the specs we've already put in, because it's um, just a factory cheap Holden one. So it's in there just to catch dust, but it's um, not plugged in. GPS area was hidden under here. You can kind of see it just there. So, and I've tested that, that's already working. So I can pop this cover back on now. Just like that. Get rid of that, whatever that was. Cool. So now all I really need to do is just tidy up the wiring around the sides a wee bit and start putting the panels back together and that's it for the stereo done. I'll do a more in-depth um, 
uh, view of how the steering wheel controls, what's on the displays and things like that, and especially this heater unit in the final video. I'll show you guys all the total functions of it and you know how high quality it is because it is really, really nice. Um, so I'll do that in the final video, so make sure you stay tuned to see that come out. And, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe so that when the next video comes out, you will be notified when it comes out and you can you know check it out. So just need to do some packing up now. I need a 20 mil drill bit, hole cut. <gasps> Fuck now. A fucking sharp piece of metal down there. I just stabbed myself under the nail. Injury prone workplace. That oh my god. It's like a piece of weld fucking spatter. Ow. So the RCAs are coming out from behind the head unit, ducking down inside this wee hole here, where they come across. And if you can see under here, so here they come, here they are. They're under the carpet, so they won't be felt by the user or by the person in the passenger seat. This big red one here is the main um, permanent power supply for the engine coming from the battery. Now, it won't be a problem being um, too close to that as long as it's not um, in parallel for with it for too long. So. It comes along and goes about maybe 20 centimeters that way before it curves off. So I'm having it about here, maybe 10 centimeters away. It's gonna come along for about 10 centimeters in parallel and then another five that way. And then after that, it's away from the power wire. That should be fine because A, you know, you don't wanna be more than a foot in parallel with the power wire. And then B, this is a subwoofer, so there's not going to be much uh, noise that a subwoofer can put out that would be picked up on this wire. So it's not as big of a problem as if it were a speaker amp, say. So now that I'm clear of all that, I can just run it along the base line along there and out through the boot. But I will do that tomorrow as part of the um, amplifier wiring up. And for now, I just need to start putting these panels back together and in the glove box, and then I'll be done. 327. Oh, God damn it, that hurt. That really, really hurt. I'm just gonna tuck all that in there. Oi. God, that really, really hurt. Got a massive piece of metal under my fingernail. That fucking hurt. Frickin' hell, mate. Now, glove box, what do I wanna do for that? Grant, would you say that having, that shoving your finger onto a piece of weld, spiky weld spots and letting the fragments of metal go up inside your nail be a pleasurable experience? Uh, no, I've had that before. And, um, You've had that before? It's a bit of a, a, bit of a, uh, a long lasting pain, isn't it? I think they used to, the um, Vietnamese used to use it as torture on the American soldiers. Yeah, they could have. Because now my fingernail is like incessantly bleeding. It won't stop. Some duct tape. All right, where am I going to do the USB cable for this thing? There's a nice shelf up there. Probably just need to make it come through. I'll make a hole for it to come through in the back and then that'll be fine. Yep, that'll do. Easy to get a glove. Do I have to put the this glove box back in first or do I put the panel back in first? I think the panel goes back in first, okay.
pipe in your mouth. I am the needle in your arm. I'm the pipe in your mouth. Your mouth. Dirty tight, dirty light, licking the flow. I'm the reason that they wanna come kicking the door. I'm a devil, I'm a demon, I'm a voice in your head. You know the one that's in the trunk. Okay guys, I am finished. Finished for the day. Haven't finished the car, but man, it's, oh, there's some music. I'll just pause it. There we go. Okay, so yeah, I've got, oof, man, the hardest part was definitely the stereo. So today I've got done, um, I've, cleaned, sound in, and installed the speaker in the rear passenger's door because that was the only one I had left to do and then I spent pretty much the rest of the day dealing with this bad boy of a stereo Alpine 8 inch navigational Bluetooth GPS everything unit, it just does the works so it might look like a regular double din on camera this dimension here is 8 inches, it's an oversized screen, you will have seen that earlier got this fitting kit here with the touch screen um, heater controls in there up here it displays your volts and your oil pressure it even displays see it says there in the center of the screen you guys probably can't see it but it says Bluetooth paused and it displays your radio and your volume and everything like that it's been an absolute mission getting it in there making it look nice but I've got it done in the end and I'm so happy with how it's turned out um, I was having a little trouble getting the fitting kit to stay in there nicely with a little bit of uh, sort of Kiwi ingenuity and a bit of hot glue I was able to get it to you know get the clips to act a bit more firmly so they now hold it in there well oh there's also a external hazard light switch here so there's that one there's also the one on the touch screen so that's it for today guys really appreciate you uh, watching this video and you know seeing how I do things like that if you want to if you guys want to see what happens with the rest of the car, with the amplifier and the subwoofer and how I carpet this um, subwoofer box, which is going to go in the boot, make sure you subscribe to my channel so that when I bring out the new video, you'll be notified and you'll be able to see that straight away. If this is your first time on my channel, make sure you subscribe so you can get all the car audio updates. And uh, if you didn't see my first video for this car, make sure you go back and click that. It'll be the same. It'll be just be the previous episode for this um, car audio, etc. season. And you can see how I installed all the sound deadening and speakers into all the other doors, including the tweeters. I've, um, I've already had a listen to the sound system as it is at the moment, just with the speakers and the sound deadening and the stereo. No amplifier, no subwoofer yet, and already it sounds awesome. Lots and lots of bass, I have to say, just for four speakers. Um, just goes to show what that sound what that sound editing does it's yeah it sounds really good I've tested everything everything is working well so at least I know that part of the job is done and now I can move on to doing the amplifier and the subwoofer install in the boot in my final video where I you know tune everything and give you guys the full rundown I'll also go into a good amount of depth with this special Alpine fitting kit which has the touchscreen display designed for the 8 inch screen and I'll try and explain everything about that as clearly as I can and show you guys what the screen actually looks like and there are actually some settings in it you can change the colour all sorts of things so stay tuned for that make sure to subscribe so that when the new video comes out you'll see it as always guys give my video a like if you enjoyed it leave a comment if you, there was something you particularly liked about it or maybe something you didn't know something you would like to suggest to me I'm always open to have conversations with people on YouTube um, check out my Facebook pages I have got car audio etc DJ etc and GoPro etc as Facebook pages check them out I've got all my car audio photos and videos up there and also you know as I say every time subscribe to my channel and check out more car audio videos and have a good day